A couple more pro skate edits have dropped, and monologues seem to be the newest trend in rollerblading. I just like being. I like turtles. There's been skate parks burning down, new skate crews firing out edits, Solomon are on the wind up again, and Anthony Marchione still has the fastest speed going. Chatting all about that and more in this video. All the stunts are performed by professionals. Do not attempt this yourself. Big shout out to Muzzle. Use Moiz at checkout for 10% off your order, which helps support this channel. Summer has hit and Billy is back on the tools. Straight onto new ledges in the neighborhood. And that people's roost flying off to grind. What a nutter. Like nearly bounces dead off the curb and still got back up there and did it twice to get it spot on. What a boss man and what an icon. What the fuck? So sadly, the other week, Skate Laborious in North St. Louis burnt down. There was a massive fire overnight in North St. Louis at a historic German Gothic Catholic church converted into an indoor skate park. The 150-year-old 19th century Gothic cathedral was taken over by Dave Blum, Josh Hay and Brian Redwell a decade ago. And since then, they've poured their heart and soul into creating a skate park and hub for an underserved community. At the time, I was a welder at the City Museum, building big, weird, crazy stuff for Bob Cassidy. They were like, well, um, do you know anything about working on old buildings? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I know a lot about that, actually. So put his skills to good use in creating the skate park, helped by crowdfunding. They had raised around $300,000 from donations and holding punk shows in the basement. They were working towards bringing it up to regulation and officially opening it as like a public art center, bed and breakfast, and a maker space to teach kids like various skills, including skating, welding, and woodworking. They were doing a lot of that stuff already with this space, but they were having to do it privately because it wasn't quite up to standards. It looked like a really sick place to skate, like do a little bit of art, learn some practical skills, but unfortunately the place burnt down. We are at Hogan and North Market here in the St. Louis Place neighborhood. The damage to the old St. Laborious Church here is simply massive. All the money they raised beforehand is now going into the repair and any extra donations are going straight into rebuilding the church. Really hope they get the support they need. It's a big thing for their community. I'll leave a link to the uh, GoFundMe in the description. Have you caught any of the SIS online content footage? It's bananas. Misaki Katayama. Naburu Katayama and Ren Fujiwara pulling off some of the most audacious yet perfectly controlled tricks I've ever seen. It's actually a bit mad, like every trick is a mind melter. Imagine thinking you had a chance at that contest and you see them free. It's like, ah, oh, mate, scrap this, like. So Fred's is the newest social media platform from Zuckerberg. It's like Instagram, Twitter, and Solomon have jumped straight onto it and straight into the trolling for engagement. It's almost become an annual thing for Solomon to do a little bit of, like, winding up. I'm pretty sure it's just over a year ago that they posted Remember the Solomon Action Sports Era, getting Solomon fans all, like, worked up about a possible comeback. Please, come back. They absolutely love it. Not really too bothered about Solomon at the moment. I think the market's too small and too volatile to be able to like handle that kind of competition. But equally, I would like to see what price point they would come in at because they can't be ordering loads because there's just not enough of an audience. Like, so they'll be like quite low order quantity. So surely the price is going to be up there. But you know, meh, whatever. Like, oh, I've heard an unsubstantiated rumor that they're going to be making a frame. What is the crack at the moment for monologue intros for skate promo edits? Like, wait, wait, let's, let's, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. All right. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Both Bobby and Carlos have swung for it. There's bits in their edit that side by side look like UFC promo. Welcome to the UFC, baby. It's over. Carlos was talking about fear, about staying in shape to minimize injury and how it's the adrenaline and self-improvement that keeps him going in rollerblades. Then. The way it was shot with the production and everything, I thought I was going to be sold like a Carlos Bernal protein shake or some sort of energy drink or something. Fair play, you can do push-ups to backflips. I didn't know what I was watching. What he was talking about does make sense and the relationship was made very clear. It's interesting to see more into skaters' lives, but like, like I think that was just a little bit too polished. I think stuff like that is better presented naturally and like raw. The edit is fairly action-packed. There's a mad bit which I think is meant to be in 3D. And then there's a bit where he turns all green and he starts to look like Blanca from Street Fighter. After he's charged up, it all kicks off and out come the stunts. Fair few disaster tricks, some gaps, some wall rides in there. 
I was a bit surprised with this bike rack one, not something that I thought I'd see him do, but like, you know, don't let him know your next move and that kind of stuff. And then there was a huge top sole to Roy on what looked like a 30 foot drop rail. He's definitely hit his quota for hammers in this one. I already met my quota, you jerk. I originally thought the skates were blue and green, but the official pick suggests that they're actually meant to be purple and green. They defo look a little bit better on feet, which is generally always the case. I hope they come with that necklace though that says hammers only. I also hope that all pro model edits have a part where the skater light turns into a different color or like there's electricity flowing through them. You know how Snoop Dogg turns into an actual dog in one of his videos? I hope Sam Croft turns into that Fox logo, because that'd be sick. Chasing people around Bay 66, like jumping over fences into people's gardens, nicking their cat's food and stuff like that. Mikhail Vitzman turning into a badger with like his headband on. Nick Lomax would be like a spider monkey or something, I reckon. Oigan turning into a llama. Undercover should do like an anamorphosis line and they can all change into their animal of choice, mate. That edit would be bananas. If you're into the videos, a great way to support me is to give me a like. There's also merch you can get your hands on. There's a Patreon. There's also a channel membership, sneak peeks, exclusive videos, all that kind of good stuff. And it's vital for me in order to keep making these videos. Cheers. In Bobby's monologue, he let us know that he likes pink. I just like pink. Which is like fairly obvious, you know? I feel like they maybe sprung it on him at the last minute. They were like, yeah, video's done, but Got this idea about a monologue, uh, just say something, yeah, about the skates. Then they got onto a really cool part about the joy of seeing kids getting into skating with some great pictures from his youth. There's this really good one of him and Ty Chris. And then it kicks off with a bang, man. The fakey 630 kg is on, like, that is really nicely done. The production is brilliant straight away, like, you're hit with the quality of it. The music's really well lined up. The plane wing drop was sick. The launch of the wall ride was really good as well. Like shows how comfortable he is in the air, like holding his form really well, playing into his strengths there. Some really nifty like technical stuff, nice drop to the fish brain and some really interesting spots as well. The park skating is really smooth, shows a lot of his control, got his signature switch up air in there as well but it felt a tiny bit like underwhelming. And I think he's like posted better stuff on his IG. There's all good stuff in there. There's nothing sloppy, but bar the opening tricks, it felt like he skated well within his abilities. Like, especially considering it's like local parks to him, which you'll be familiar with. And it's like a promo for your pro skate edit. But I reckon that's just so that like everything was like super smooth and clean, but still, like, I don't think he needed to do that. I think he could have like raised up a little bit more and still like got the stuff down. He's talked about skating within his comfort zone in interviews before. Sometimes I go to my comfort zone, eh? I can do gaps, so I'm, I'm gonna do another gap today. Which I think he has with this, like, which is fine. Like, but I was expecting fireworks, man. I was expecting him to go off, especially after those first two tricks. I think the primo would have been better split into two videos. First, you'd have the skating, which would be like really impactful, have like a higher rewatch value. Then you would have the separate like documentary style, like deep dive into the culture and the lifestyle of like Israel skaters, you know, tell us a little bit more about that scene, give us some like insights. I mean, that thing could have been like 10, 15 minutes on its own, like give it space to like breathe, man. Like it's great seeing that stuff, but it felt all a little bit like surface level like you know there's a bigger story there but you're not getting to see it and then when you're adding the skating it's like diluting it a little bit other people mentioned it felt like he didn't have a lot of time to put the edit together i think he's personally been focused on other things and like judging by his stories that's what the case is he's in london for the summer he's been filming with cody lampman so there's definitely going to be an edit there he's also said that london's the best place he's ever skated so i suspect that one's going to be the big one side note is called candy and there's already a video called candy which is a bit of an odd one i mean it's not a crime call it brain fear gone too if you want like call it brain fear and loathing in los israel if you really want we can't stop here this is bad country call it more words call it word search like i mean like i said it's like no it's no massive issue but it just seems a little bit odd that it's like plenty of words out there you could have chose according to you lot the base m edit has been the best like pro skate edit so far i've had a couple of drongo suggesting that because i did the poll it skewed the results as if bass then was like a hard sound, like it really had to convince people to vote for that. Not like I've been out there with a placard going, yeah, this is who you should vote for, like. The one by a mile, man, it wasn't even close. And I mean, if you're not convinced, like, do the poll yourself, like. 
An edit that did have an impact for me was John Bellino's Chops and Box Volume 1 from the Bong Leech crew. Bellino is the epitome of a street skater. He can skate it all and make something out of any spot. He's so amazing at his craft. He can get you a trick on a non-spot and he stays totally relevant, like adopting all the latest moves and trends and styles, but making them his own and keeping his like rawness and like energy that he's known for. He even dropped a hurricane sweat stance on a ledge in a line. That is a touch and it's really sick to see that he's got that in his arsenal, but he only throws it on the rare occasion. When the base stem edit dropped, I was like, that is it for the next couple of months, maybe even for the rest of the year. Like, no edit's even going to like make a dent, nothing's going to touch the sides. But then Bellino dropped that, I was like, poof, this is amazing, it holds its own as well. Bong Leach also had edits from other crew riders, Tony Rivertuso and Jeremiah Doherty. Both are really sick and interesting skaters to watch. Most recently you would have seen Tony tearing it up at the Blading Cup and he brings all that to his edit. He's got some really nifty tricks in there and I can appreciate a person who looks like they've got control of their boots and really good style and can do something interesting with it. Jeremiah is sick and a creative one. His skating plays into my sensitivities. Like he has a little bit of like extra touches or like clever ideas I think are really cool. Plus the soundtracks for the edits are his band, Faders, which I think is really cool as well. Like keeping it all together. The edit captures a bit of lifestyle, you get to see a little bit more from the skaters and they're really visually distinctive as well. So I'm looking forward to seeing more from them. Shred the Ground happened in Paris the other week and it looked like it was pretty full on. Yo Zenk took the win and Joe Atkinson took the best trick with a backslide on the sticky chrome number. It was like reminiscent of 90s backslides. The boys over at Jumbo have posted their last video of this season. So that's it. And they're taking a little bit of a break because it's going to be a scorcher this summer. Looks like it's going to be another scorcher of a day. The sun is still high in the sky. That means there'll be work to be done. Working a few fucking creamy pints into you. And they'd just be melting if they were out there skating. They have dropped some merch. So you've got the goat tee. You've got the forest camo tee. You've got a couple of hats in there. Some wax laces. A solid offering, but where's the Cody wig, man? That'd be a lovely little bit of merchandise to buy. Or like the Heath Burley egg cup from the Egg Eating Champion. Although I don't actually think he won. I think he looked pretty close to death, actually. Really looking forward to season two, Jumbo Strikes Back. Another great edit to watch is Solace starring Oliver Prado, George Castro, Gene Galang, and young Mesmer rider Sebastian Castro, who filmed and edited the thing as well. And he's only 15. The kid is the truth and he just gets it. I think he's such a cool ambassador for skating. Like He looks apart, he's got the tricks on him, it feels raw, it feels authentic. Like I'm really buzzing for his future and to see what he does. Like, really cool edit, great soundtrack, got a good crew in there. I'm a big fan of Oliver's skating as well. I always appreciate somebody with some good aerial form. Sadly, rollerblading has recently lost a huge figure in Joey Barbera. He was a shining light in the community and will be sorely missed. Thoughts go to his family at this difficult time. This next bit's gonna be like final score, but it's actually for Blade events. July 15th, MK Jam, Milton Keynes, England. July 23rd, Portsmouth Park Skaters, South Sea, England. July 29th, Pure Fun Blade Party, Livingston, Scotland. August 5th, Southport Jam, Southport, England. Copenhagen B-Roll from the 18th to the 20th of August, Copenhagen. August 26th, the London Jam, London, England. Me and my mum might be going to that one. Me and me mum and me dad and me grand and a bucket of vindaloo. Also on the 26th, actually from the 24th to the 27th, you've got the Metro Card Classic. So that's a collaboration between the Boshy Pipe and Billy's New York competition. September 30th, Mile Hall Battle, Denver, US of A. And from September 7th to 9th, a Briss Berlin, Berlin, Germany. That's the news. Big shout out to my Patreons. Your support like keeps me going. Here's a couple of other videos you can watch in the meantime and I'll catch you again soon. Spotty dog.